of the eye lovers. In her compact, she narrows his image. The moat in her eyes. He makes crude jokes about the people walking by. You never smile. You're a victim of the night. The night has no God. Macau was exciting. 
expensive vitamin. You must keep it closed. And the personality? It might be disagreeable, might be untamable. Look into its eyes. An infection in one eye, you blow smoke into it.
nosotros.
question. I try and give you a short answer anyway. I'm Sally Jane Norman and I'm from originally from New Zealand, but I'm New Zealander and French. I'm a theatre historian and I work on performance and technology and I work a lot on new media and cultural issues. So here specifically I'm working with Stein on the Touch Festival. Could you tell us uh, what is the Touch Festival? The Touch Festival is uh, an exhibition of Stein's instruments, playable instruments, which have been developed over the past three decades. And it is a symposium which for three days drew together people from a large number of different disciplines, uh, of course musicians and composers, but also puppeteers and jugglers and an astronomer and a philosopher 
and a really interesting mix of people. And it's also been a series of three evenings of performances, and once more with a very big variety of types of musical performance. So from experimental music, um, which in some ways is uh, derived from perhaps a more classical origin, right through to techno and to installation work processing real-time radio signal. And could you say also uh, the exhibition for yeah. the children? That we, we have that too? Yeah. And, oh yes, okay. The exhibition has a very specific focus to it. Stein develops playable instruments. So here we have an exhibition which says, please do touch. And it's very specially oriented also to children. Uh, it's a very interesting way for children to discover the links between gestures and sound production. And it's been fascinating seeing all the schools coming through here with Lara van Druten, who's been looking after the pedagogical side. And that is not a child singing in the background, I don't think, but we have a lot of children who are singing in the background. Um, and there is a really interesting feeling of excitement and discovery with these children coming through. And in many cases, it's the children who are showing the adults what to do. And what is, according to you, the, the very uh, importance of this festival? For me, the most important thing about this festival is the very broad spectrum of disciplines and types of performance practice that it covers. It's the mix that goes from very uh, low-end, low-key technology through to some fairly sophisticated devices and interfaces, but there is no intellectual hierarchy uh, in the use of these systems so people can be playing with very simple objects and they can be playing with very complex programs and computer processes and our um, perhaps the main point of Syme's activity is that there is an instrument that is appropriate for a certain artistic use and not that we must systematically build and use incredibly sophisticated instruments. So I, I think that what is really special at Stein is that instruments are developed specifically for different types of performance, different functionalities for live performance. So the range is extremely broad and I think this is very unusual. And do you think um, the instruments that uh, Stein has developed and also the performances that have been performed here, are they um, very important uh, as an influence also to uh, theatre in general? I think that the instruments and the performances that we've seen here um, have very, very strong implications for theatre. I think that the ways that a live performer uses gesture and uh, his or her own body uh, in relation to different technological devices. Um, this is a burning question in 1998, nearly 1999. I think we're developing new relationships to machines and that the theatre is a very important place for giving these relationships a poetic form and therefore these instruments are incredibly important for theatre. And in theatre, I see a lot of experimentation that tends to be demonstration of very high-end technologies. And sometimes the real theatricality and the sense of performance and the pleasure of performance is lost because we're simply demonstrating big machines. And what is interesting here is that we have seen time and time again that sometimes a very small device or a small machine uh, can be an incredibly effective theatrical partner. So I think this is a, an important lesson for the performance world, yes. And um, do you think there's a big influence from the contemporary art, like from the 60s, the body art performances, etc.? Is it um, like a source for um, this kind of performances for electronic music? The performance art forms of the 60s, uh, body art and uh, the risk performance traditions and this, this kind of work, I think, 
uh, has had a very important influence on what is being done now. Um, not just the Vito Acconci or um, uh, Oppenheim type uh, performance that came through the fine arts, through the so-called plastic arts, sculpture and installation works, but also performance from rock. I think that uh, Stein's instrumental, instrumental uses and some of the work that we've even seen here, um, it brings to mind memories of Pete Townsend smashing his guitar. Um, um, the doors uh, electrocuting themselves on stage, this kind of stuff. I think there is a very wide, or Lou Reed, of course, um, um, sticking a needle in his arm. Um, these performance traditions are all part of our cultural thinking. So I think we go from uh, a fairly heavily intellectualized form uh, of the 60s uh, and the minimalist dance tradition, of course, uh, Paxton, the, Jud the Judson Church movement. All of this is very present in our, in our immediate cultural history. But at the same time, I think what is good in this kind of setting, and we've seen it in the choice of works, is that the, the heritage of, of rock, of techno, of hip-hop, of breakdance is also something we're very, very conscious of. And do you think um, this is the music and uh, the performance of the next century? No, I think the music and the performance of the next century will take place in the next century. And I sometimes get a little bit irritated when people with this kind of obsession with the year 2000, they say, we're doing it now. And I think, well, how are you going to feel about the people who are really doing it in the year 2000? And this is what we have to look at. And I think that another thing that is important at SIM is that there has always been a very, very strong uh, preoccupation with working with younger people, with children, of course, as you can see in the exhibition. But also there, there is an absolutely remarkable number of, of young musicians, musical scholars, and also theatre people and installation people coming through Stein and working with the technologies. And these are the people who will be creating the art in the year 2000. So we can't say what it's, what it's going to be. And they can't yet say what it's going to be. But all we're trying to do is to offer them a platform that will allow them to develop this art under the best possible conditions. Kunnen we nog even vragen um, uh, wat ze van het festival vond? Ja, wat haar favoriete is en zo. Ja. Dan vraag jij ook maar, dan kunnen we straks de vraag herhalen. Nog. Nee, dat gaat goed. En wat voor jou has been an, uh, an example or um, someone of whom you think is really um, the person who uh, did these things for the for the first time, like a source. Or? I think perhaps the first actor who, on the Athens Square or Agora, actually dissociated himself from the Dionysiac chorus and set himself apart and took the risk of being an individual performer is perhaps the real source of what we're doing now. The performer is somebody who sets himself apart from the crowd and I think that if you go back to the very ancient archaic origins of theatre then you find the real examples. And all the performers I have seen here, I think they have this in their blood. They have this risk-taking, setting oneself apart from the crowd and giving oneself. Uh, it's, a kind of a, it's a kind of a sacrifice. And Grotowski, of course, uses this term for his performance tradition. But I think it's something um, infinitely moving uh, when people are aware of this tradition. So I would say the, the first Greek actor, and, and of course uh, the actor is the hypocrite. Uh, that's, that's the traditional term for it. But for me, um, Steiner Vizulka is, is the modern, um, she's the contemporary manifestation of the same thing. And I was absolutely overwhelmed last night by the way in her own performance she integrated the materials of the other performers during the festival. And this was such an incredible way of improvising with the timeline that we'd established during the three evenings of, of, the, of the performances. 
It was a very subtle mix of, of, of this live, physical, risk-taking presence and manipulating something from a fairly immediate past, but from the past nevertheless. What is the importance of Steiner? <laughs> it's um, undescribable. Yeah. Like the importance of Dick Reimarkus. These people are leaving us an absolutely undescribable legacy. And I think that their drive and their incredible rigor as artists um, is perhaps the quality that we have to recognize the most because that is what we have to try and reproduce somehow. But those people are absolutely irreplaceable models. And these performers or these artists, do they come together regularly? No. Somewhere in the world? Oh, sorry. Uh, these performers don't necessarily come together regularly. The performers we've seen over the past three evenings, they have all more or less met uh, paradoxically uh, across Stein technologies, but what is nice is that Stein isn't jumping up and down and saying, this is a Stein machine. I think what is coming out of this meeting is not so much a reflection of the technology as such, but a reflection of the ethics that has put this technology in place. In other words, the technology has been developed um, in absolute, uh, in a very intimate relation with the performer in answer to specific artistic needs. So, of course, not everything that's been on this stage has been Stein produced, thank goodness, because otherwise we would be in some absolutely huge uh, factory or we'd be in a Phillips factory or something. Um, but there is, a, there is a kind of a common bond, I think, amongst the performers who are here in that they are very careful in the choice of which devices they actually use for their performance. They know exactly why they choose this machine rather than that one. Um, so it's, uh, once again, um, th they're the exact opposite of people who just want to do something really slick with the latest big machine. And I think that's a stupid choice because the latest big machine is obsolete um, practically by the time it hits the shelf. I think it was very special that people really wanted to learn from each other, cooperated, um, not just being the performer. And I think that's very really also for contemporary arts, as, I, as an artist can, can see it, it's very different. The, the artists here have shown an incredible openness and a desire to learn from each other. And, and that's been very clear, of course, in the actual practice. We can, we can see people who've been coming in on the other sound checks and, and watching very discreetly. Um, how other people are working and then talking about it. There's a, there's a very um, fine sense of respect for the other person's work and, and also a desire to learn from it. And this came through also in the symposium. I was um, very glad that so many of the performers uh, actually attended the symposium from start to finish. They weren't, uh, the symposium was actually developed as a place where people could speak about their work um, instead of having other people as their spokespersons. I think there's a big problem today when artists are doing the work and then you have a whole different cast of people who are responsible for describing it and intellectualizing it and communicating it because they're doing what Tekla Shiphoff said on the first day. Um, they're perhaps talking about something that in the end is very different to the actual performance, to the actual artwork. So the fact that already Joel Ryan and Michel Weiswitz uh, co-organized the symposium, we, we were doing it, all three of us, and they were there from start to finish as performers. Um, the fact that uh, people like uh, John Rose and uh, George Lewis and uh, Leticia Sonami and David Wessel, who all have performance backgrounds, uh, were very strongly engaged in the discussion, and Trevor Wishart, of course, who did a fantastic uh, discussion performance. Uh, this for me is a, is a very uh, rare and um, uh, a very important uh, sign of openness, as you say, amongst the artists. Could you tell us something about Michel Weiss, <laughs> I think the best person to tell you something about Michel Weiss is Michel Weiss. Uh, 
um, he's, a, he's a performer, and I think he can probably give you a very good interview on this subject. <laughs> and at last, um, could you tell us, uh, you did it already a bit, um, or a lot actually, uh, what the success is of this festival? What do you think of the, of the festival as a whole now uh, at the last day? Looking back at what we've done this week, um, none of us is thinking in terms of success. We, we're not in an Audimat system, you know. What we're thinking of is how to go further. We, we, we can recognize what went well, and particularly the dialogue and the desire for encounter between disciplines and between performers and between developers. This has been extremely strong. So we would like to try and um, build on this. We're also aware of things that we would like to push further. And one of the things that I think I have in common with the people who are already working at Slime is that we don't like just repeating the same format. Uh, this is perhaps inherent uh, to Slime ethics. Uh, a live performance is a single transient moment, not to be me mechanically reproduced. And I think the same goes for this festival and the symposium and the exhibition. We're not into mechanically reproducing the format that we've just uh, used. What we would like to do is try and create other situations that will generate other kinds of encounter or take these encounters still further. And could you tell us uh, one more thing, please? about um, in theater and music in general. Uh, what is, I think, very um, interesting is also uh, the aspect of time. It's always, always a moment and then it's, it's gone. But especially in this kind of music and performing, as there's also a lot of uh, improvising and um, reacting to another, it's even more um, like this. It's there and it's gone. Could you tell us something about this? I think that the, the time-bound uh, aspect of the performing art that we're involved in here um, is an extremely rich one artistically uh, with its improvisation aspects because this is uh, risk-taking to a very high degree and I think that in a media system and in a social and cultural system where there is so much focus on recording, on registering, uh, on doing exactly what you're doing now, um, there is a tendency to forget the vitality of the lived instant. And people can be so obsessed taking snapshots and filming um, that they miss out completely on the full-fleshed reality. So I think that the, the fact that Stein has always developed technologies specifically for the live performance situation is immensely important. I do think also that there are new forms of live performance that are going to emerge across networks and their immediacy will be of another kind, but I think that you can perhaps think in terms of new forms of remote performance and they will still be live. It's another kind of vivacity. But um, the... The, the passion and the intensity of the instant is something that we've lived very strongly here. Thank you very much. And could you just uh, repeat uh, one sentence? Um, because we leave out our questions. Yeah, yeah. Um, the influence of Steiner is? Oh, God. Oh, yes. Yeah? Um, the influence of Steiner is indescribable. Thank you so much. Okay. It was interesting. It's a pleasure. I'm sorry I'm not